Grace, peace, and love, family, and welcome on back in to the Bread, Wine, and Soul Food Bible Study Channel, where we deal with nothing but what thus saith the Lord, the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, the King James Version of the Bible, and everything that the Father and Jesus Christ has made known and revealed unto us through His Spirit of Truth, also known as the Comforter and the Holy Ghost. So with that being said, all praise, honor, and glory be unto the almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Jesus' name. Because truly without him, like Jesus said over here in John 15 and at the end of verse 5, for without me ye can do nothing. Family, we can't do nothing without God. So this is why it's wise for us as human beings to look to our creator for everything. And always ask for his wisdom, counsel, and direction in everything that we're doing, family. All right, so let's open up this Bible study on this blessed Sabbath morning with 1 Corinthians 15. We'll read verses 21 through 26, then we'll skip over and read verses 50 through 58. So it reads, For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive, but every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of, to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Let's skip over to verses uh, 50 through 58 now. It said, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and application of his holy word to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So once again, peace and love, family, to everybody that's tuning in now and later. And once again, blessed Sabbath day. And it's always a blessing to be here reading what thus saith the Lord. So uh, what we're going to deal with today, family, on this blessed Sabbath morning is a topic that the Lord Jesus Christ sent his Holy Spirit and inspired me to do. And that is... One of the first prophecies of the Bible, the destruction of Satan. And what we're going to take a look at throughout the course of this Bible study is how one of the first prophecies that was prophesied by God was the destruction of Satan. And uh, God was talking about how he was going to put enmity between uh, thy seed and her seed. Well, that enmity is the friction between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light, which is Christ Jesus' kingdom and his father. So let's go over here and take a look at this in Genesis 3. Let's look at this first prophecy that the Bible records for us. Genesis 3. And it's the destruction of our enemy, our adversary, which is none other than Satan, the devil. Let's take a look at this. Genesis 3. Genesis 3. And let's have a look at verses... Hmm, 12. Let's read verses 12 through 15. Let's read this. So it says, And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. So right here, we see in the blame game. 
Adam is, you know, blaming his wife for getting this information from Satan, the devil. And, you know, he's not being accountable for his actions. He's throwing his wife under the bus. So the buck is going to get passed. And what's going to happen is Eve is going to let God know, well, the, safe, the serpent, he beguiled me. He lied to me. Watch this. It says, and the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. So she told God, well, the serpent, he lied to me. And I listened to this information that he has given me. Now, let's continue. Verse 14. It says, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. There's constant friction between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness, family. All right. We constantly in spiritual warfare until Satan is cast into the lake of fire forever. All right. Well, before that, God is going to lock him up for a thousand years. All right. And it's going to be nothing but peace on the earth. So, you know, when he's locked away, that's when the earth is going to have peace. But God ultimately is going to get rid of Satan forever. Throw him away like some trash. Forever. So once again, it says, and I will put in between enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. So Satan is getting his little jabs in on the body of Christ. But eventually God is going to issue a death blow that's going to eliminate Satan from out of this creation. Totally throwing this dude into the lake of fire where he belongs at. All right. But let's continue. Let's go and take a look at this now, because this is one of the first prophecies of the Bible. This enmity between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. So once again, this bruising of the heel is uh, talking about the afflictions that Satan will be bringing to the body of Christ. But this bruising his head, God is going to kill this dude. And that's what we all waiting for. But let's continue looking at this first. Uh, first John three, because Jesus Christ, he's such a save. Man, God is such an ultimate. I mean, uh, he's the ultimate savior family. He's such an awesome God. Now, watch this. God understood that he was going to have to come and die for the sins of the people. Now, come and look at what he did. He tore down Satan's works, which is why Jesus Christ was manifested. Because, you know, if you got somebody that's messing up something, you need somebody that's going to be able to fix everything. And that somebody was none other than Christ Jesus sent by his father. Let's go and take a look at this now. I said uh, first, first John. Let's look at first John. First John three. And let's take a look at this. Let's see what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did for us. First John three verses seven through eight. And then right after this. We'll take a look at uh, Hebrews 2 and verse 14. I got to be mindful to make sure I'm keeping a steady pace because the people are reading along with me. So y'all bear with me. It says, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. So if you're doing a righteous thing, which is following after the commandment of the father, trusting in Jesus Christ, being obedient. You are considered a righteous individual. Don't let Satan lie to you. It said he that committed sin is of the devil. So if you make it a constant, uh, if you make it a constant habit to sin against God, you of the devil. Because a true servant of God, they're going to have their conscience pricked. That Holy Spirit going to be telling you, no, nah, you know you wrong. You know you shouldn't be doing that. Remember the Lord said this, this, and this. Thou shalt not. Yeah. So it says, for the devil sent it from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested. So Jesus Christ was manifested for this purpose. And let's see what it was for. That he might destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus Christ came in the flesh to destroy the works of the devil. So already we starting to see that prophecy in Genesis 3 
already unfold. Jesus was created or came in the flesh to destroy the works of Satan, the devil. Now, let's continue looking at this precept. Hebrews 2. Because Satan, the devil, is our adversary, family. God is going to eliminate this guy out of the creation, throwing him in a lake of fire. Look at this. Hebrews 2, verse 14. Satan and his kingdom is finished. It said, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. So once again, Jesus Christ was uh, a body was prepared for him so that he might taste death for every single human being that has ever existed. OK, and through his death, he destroyed the power of him that had the power of death, which is Satan. Let's continue looking at this. This is why Satan was mocking Jesus, telling him to come down off the cross. Let's continue looking at this. We're going to take a look at uh, Matthew 27 and verses 36 through 43. Matthew 27 verses 26 or 36 through 43. I'm sorry. So let's take a look at this. So you had the, the, the uh, chief priests and the elders that uh, bore false witness on Jesus Christ and eventually led to his crucifixion. But let's take a look at this. Let's see what happened. It says, and sitting down, they watched him there and set up over his head, his accusation written. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. So this was the title that was above Jesus Christ's head on the cross. It says, then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand on a, and another on the left. So Jesus was crucified between two thieves and. It says, and they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads. So they expression like uh, uh, contempt or shame, like, like he's a disgrace. All right. It says in saying, thou destroyedest the temple and buildest it in three days. Save thyself or thou that destroyedest the temple and buildest it in three days. Save thyself. If thou be the son of God, come down from the cross. So you see the spirit of Satan is operating in these people because if Jesus would have came down off the cross, we wouldn't have no salvation coming. OK, so once again, this is Satan using the people or provoking the people to say these things, trying to tempt Jesus to come down from off the cross. All right. So it says, likewise, also the chief priest mocking him with the scribes and elders said. He saved others. Himself, he cannot save. So this is none other than Satan. The spirit of Satan is what they operating in right here. Okay? Trying to tempt Jesus to come down off the cross. Because if he would have came down off the cross, guess what? We wouldn't have no salvation left. Thank God for Jesus. Jesus, you can't never say Jesus is a weak man. It took a lot of strength and courage to do this. This is why he's blessed forevermore. Let's continue. It says, if he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. They wouldn't have believed him no way. This is Satan mocking Jesus on the cross. It says he trusted in God. Let him de deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. And guess what? They wound up finding out anyway that he was the son of God. When you go back and read verse 54 over here in this Matthew 27. So once again, this was Satan provoking the people to tell Jesus to come down from off the cross. Now, why would you want to do something like this? Matter of fact, let's go and take a look at something else. I just want to show you something. Romans 1. Romans 1. Romans 1. And let's take a look at verse 16. It says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So the gospel of Christ Jesus is the power of salvation. 
And this is another thing that Satan is trying to get us to forget about, family. He don't want to he don't want to have nothing to do with God. He hates God and everybody that follows God. All right. And this is why this guy will or this spirit will be destroyed him and everybody that follows him forever. So now let's continue looking at this. Let's continue looking at this work that Christ Jesus did on the cross. Let's go and take a look at Colossians 2. Colossians 2. And we'll take a look at uh, verses 13 through 15. Colossians 2, verses 13 through 15. So let's see what Jesus did for us. He redeemed us from the curse of death. So much so to the... To, we don't even have to die a second death, family. God can give us and will give us eternal life if we have done that which was pleasing to him and the Father. And that's being obedient. Being obedient to what the words say. So now let's continue. Colossians 2, verses 13 through 15. And I'm going to give you some time to flip your Bibles there. Colossians 2. Verses 13 through 15. And right after this, if you uh, got a pen and some paper, we're going over to uh, Revelations 12 verses 1 through 5. So if you're taking notes, you can write these scriptures down ahead of time. Colossians 2 verses 13 through 15. And let's see what it says. What did Jesus do for us? It says in you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses. So when we was dead in our sins, Christ Jesus came and died for our sins and forgave us of our sins. And this is so important because the wages of sin is death. And what did God do? The father sent his only begotten son and redeemed us from the curse of this death. We don't have to die a second death, family. We don't have to go to the lake of fire because of what Christ Jesus did for us. But before he made the sacrifice, guess what? If he didn't make this sacrifice for us, every last one of us, after this life is over, we be we will be deemed for the lake of fire, family. But because of what Christ Jesus did on that cross, nailing our sins to the cross, not the law, nailing our sins to the cross, now we got an opportunity to live forever through the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for us. Verse 14. It says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Was it the law that was against us or our sins that was against us? It was our sins, family. Not the law. The law is good. As a matter of fact, over here in Romans, let me just show you something in Romans 7 and verse 12. Romans 7, verse 12. It says, wherefore, the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. So once again, God ain't going to do away with his law. It's holy and just and good. And as a matter of fact, that's what the new covenant is about. Putting the law, statutes and commandments in our hearts and in our minds. So look at this. Going back to Colossians 2. Verse 14. Once again, it says blotting out the handwritings of the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. And took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. It wasn't the law that was contrary to us, family. The law showed us where we messed up at. It was our sins that he nailed to the cross. Okay? So once again, it says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he took Satan's power away from him when he died on that cross. He made a show of them openly, triumphant, triumphing over them in it. He was mocking them when he died. Okay, so he took this power back from Satan. All right, so now let's look at this now. Let's go back. Let's go back to Revelations. Because Satan has been at the church of God, persecuting the church of God forever. Let's take a look at this. Because ever since he got kicked out of heaven, there's always been some drama on the earth. Always. Ever since Adam listened to his wife Eve, there has been drama on the earth. So now let's take a look. Revelations 12. 
Let's read verses 1 through 5. It says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. This is the church. This is the church right here. Okay, it says, And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. So this nation of Israel is about to produce a son, and this is none other than Jesus. It says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, which is none other than Satan, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. So when Satan, the devil got kicked out, he took a, a third of the angels with him. A third of God's angels that God created. Satan influenced them. And they all got kicked out. A third of them. It says... Once again, and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So Satan, the devil was right there, ready to kill Jesus through Herod when he was born. And as a matter of fact, we're going to go and take a look at this because this is all part of this precept. It says, and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. This is talking about Jesus. This is who the children of Israel or the nation of people that God came from. The children of Israel. Once again, it says, and her child was called up unto God and to his throne. This is talking about Jesus. But let's go back and take a look now. Because Satan was standing at, he was waiting to devour Jesus through Herod. Watch this. Let's go back. Matthew. Let's go back and look at Matthew, Matthew 2, Matthew 2, and let's take a look at verses, hmm, Matthew 2, let's read verses 1 through 5, and then we'll skip down to verses 11 through 16, so I'm going to give you some time to flip over there, Matthew 2, verses 1 through 5, and then after that we'll skip down and read verses 11 through 16. So uh, hopefully you're there now. All right, let's read it. Matthew 2, verses 1 through 5. It says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. It didn't say it was two wise men or three. It said wise men. All right. So once again, it says, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? But we have seen his star in the east, and we are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. So now Herod is troubled at these tidings now. Oh, it's going to be another king? Who going to, somebody trying to over, overthrow my throne? Okay, let me see what's about to happen now. This is Satan provoking Herod now. Watch this. It says, and when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. So Herod wanted to find out where Christ should be born because he wanted to kill him. He was operating in the spirit of Satan. Let's see what the scripture said. Now it says, and they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets. So that's what Christ was going to be born at in Bethlehem of Judea. Now let's skip down and read verse 11. Now it says, and when they were coming to the house, talking about the wise men, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Now, if Jesus is not God in the flesh, why are you worshipping him? But that's just a side note. Let's continue. It says, and when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. So once again, there go God warning these wise men in a dream. Hey, don't go that way because Herod is going to look to kill you probably. But whatever the case, look at this. It says, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared, appeared to Joseph in a dream. Once again, you see God, he communicates with us through dreams. But it says, saying, 
Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. This is what he was trying to do. This is what we read over in Revelations 12. Satan was right there standing there waiting to devour Jesus or waiting to kill Jesus when he was born through Herod. So once again, God warned him, uh, warned uh, uh, Joseph and Mary in a dream, or he warned, he warned jo Joseph in a dream to take Jesus and hide him into Egypt until Herod was dead. So it says, and when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. That's over in Hosea 11 and 1. It says, then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. So he was trying to, he, he committed genocide is what he did. And it's also, what's that word? What's that term? Uh, in, infant side. Like, were you killing all of the babies? That's what this dude did. Genocide, infant side. That's what Herod did because he was looking to kill Jesus. So they telling the story in reverse now. But Jesus was in Egypt until Herod was dead. But let's continue. It says, then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof. From two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. So he was trying to kill Jesus. That's why he was killing all of these two year old babies and under. Because he knew that was the time frame that Jesus was going to be born at about two years. So he was trying to kill all of these babies. This was none other than Satan trying to get his jab in on, on God. On Jesus, trying to kill Jesus. Now, let's continue looking at this. Let's go over to uh, Matthew 11 and let's read verses 11 through 12. Matthew 11 and let's take a look at verses 11 through 12 and let's see what this says. So let's see what Jesus said about John the Baptist. It says, verily I say unto you. Among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. He said John the Baptist is one of the greatest men that was born among women or the greatest man to be born among women. It says, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And if you find yourself in the kingdom of God, you will be greater than him. So that's what we striving for. Immortality. OK, so once again, it says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it, take it by force. So. It said from the days of John the Baptist until now and even before. The church has been persecuted by Satan, the devil. The body of Christ has been persecuted by Satan, the devil. But you see what Jesus said. And from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffered violence so the members of the kingdom of heaven have been suffering violence at the hands or the 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 yeah the hands of Satan the devil all right he's been persecuting the church so once again let's continue looking at this let's go over and see how this happened let's go and take a look at revelations 13. Revelations 13, and we will read verses 1 through 7. Because Satan has been persecuting the church forever. Let's take a look at this. He hates the people of God. So therefore, he's going to come at us harder. This is why we got to stay girded in this word. Because without the word, we dog food. So let's continue. This is why we got to have this word of God in our heart at all times. Because Satan is constantly trying to provoke us trying to get us to do things that's contrary to the Lord. And this is when we have to remember, nope, the Lord said, thou shall not do this, this, and this. I read in the Bible that this said this, 
Satan is a liar. He'll come at you even bringing the scriptures, but twisting them. He'll twist them around. But this is why the scripture said, try the spirit by the spirit. If it's not written in this Bible, if whatever thought that you getting don't line up with what does say the Lord, throw it away. So let's continue looking at this. Revelations 13 verses one through seven, it says, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns, ten crowns and upon his heads, the names of blasphemy. So these are uh, uh, these Gentile ruling kingdoms that will be in place during the last days. OK, so this is talking about people. That's getting a power and, they th and authority from none other than Satan, the devil. A new world order is what this is. Or the, the revived Holy Roman Empire. Verse two, it says in the beast, which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet was the feet of a bear and his mouth is the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So this government. These nations, the people are getting their power and authority, authority from Satan, the devil. So, you know, this whole system here is wicked. Everything that they operating by is wicked because they got a wicked person. Controlling and dictating their actions. So it says, and I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death and his daily wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. This is none other than the resurrected Holy Roman Empire family. Daniel prophesied about it. Go back and read Daniel. Uh, you can go and look at uh, Daniel 2, Daniel 7, 8, 9. It, go back and read Daniel. We're not going to do everything. It says, and they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. So for three and a half years, this wicked government will be ruling the world, getting their power from none other than Satan, the devil. So, you know, if you got a wicked government in place, you know, the saints of God, what do that lead them at? They're going to get persecuted. Let's see what the scripture said. It says, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. To blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. So he blaspheming the father, the son, Jesus and the angels. All right. It says, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints. The saints are the ones that keep the commandments of God. As a matter of fact, let me just show you who the saints are. Just in case you don't know. Let's go over here. I want to show you something. Revelations 4. I mean, 14, I'm sorry. Revelations 14, verse 12. And then we're going to go right back to Revelations 13. So it says, here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So that's who Satan, the devil went back to go and make war with. This is who he is making war with. It says, and it was given, going back to Revelations 13 and 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. This beast and this antichrist, this false prophet. It says, and to overcome them. So don't think it's strange, you know, when you getting uh, uh, persecuted by these wicked people. God let us know this is what's going to happen. It says, and power was given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So once again, this is Satan's kingdom right here. In the last days. And Satan is already ruling uh, uh, these, these world governments right now. Look at the policies that they create. It's wicked. There's none other than Satan the devil behind it. But this is him bruising the heel of God. Okay. But ultimately, God is going to bruise his head. So now, let's go and take a look at this. Revelations 2. Revelations 2, and let's have a look at verse 10. Revelations 2 and verse 10, and I'm going to give you some time to flip over there if you're following along. Revelations 2 
and verse 10. And let's read it. It says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So if you stay faithful to what the word of God is saying, this is what he's telling to these people in the uh, uh, church of Smyrna. But not only to them, to those that got an ear to hear. Okay. So once again, if you withstand those attacks that Satan the devil is throwing at you, he said, you're going to have tribulations, 10 days, you're going to be tried. But guess what? After that, God said he'll give you a crown of life. Let's read verse 11. It says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. So if we overcome our flesh, we overcome the world, we overcome the attacks and all of the temptation that Satan the devil is throwing at us. We won't be hurt of the second death, family. We got eternal salvation coming. That's worth it. Now, let's go and take a look at this because we're going to start wrapping it up. Let's go over to uh, Romans 16 and verse 20. Romans 16 and verse 20. And we're going to see what the scripture said over here. Paul is repeating the same thing that uh, Genesis 3 and 15 was saying. But let's take a look. Romans 16. Romans 16 and 20. And right after this, we're going to go and take a look at Revelations 20, verses 7 through 10. And then we're going to conclude it with that. And then we'll continue on with the mission statement of the channel, which is to turn the hearts of the people back to God family. So let's take a look at this. Look at what God is going to do to Satan. And thank God that he's going to get rid of this wicked devil. He's our enemy and he's our only enemy. It's none other than Satan, the devil. This guy is wicked. This is why God tells us to obey him, follow his voice, because God got laws, statutes and commandments that we got to follow. And if you don't follow him automatically, by default, you plan for Satan. You plan on his team. We can't have that family. We don't want to be an enemy of Christ. But let's take a look at this. As a matter of fact, we're going to look we're we going to look at something else, too. We're going to look at something else while it's on my mind. We're going to take a look at this. Romans 16, verse 20, it says, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. God is going to stomp on Satan's head. Get rid of this dude. He's an enemy. He's an enemy to God's creation. You see what he did? He lied to Eve. And now every last one of us is dying. Even the animals, the plants die. Death is in the creation now, which is an enemy to God. This is why he's going to get rid of this. He's going to get rid of death. But let's continue. Let's look at this. I want to show you something uh, uh, before we go to Revelations 20. While the Holy Spirit is putting it on my mind. I want to show you this right here in 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians 1. 2 Thessalonians 1. And let's take a look at. Let's look at verse six. Look at what God going to do for the ones who truly trust in him. And the persecutions we, which we endure, that's a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that we got salvation coming, family. So this is why we got to hold on. We got to withstand all of the wicked attacks of Satan, the devil. And the only way to do that is through the word of God and having faith in what the father and Jesus Christ has told us. That's what we need to do. Look at this. It says, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. And from the glory of his power. So that's what happens when you follow after Satan, the devil. 
you get destroyed forever. So once again, we don't want that for us. We do not want that family. So now, Revelations 20. So everybody that follow Satan the devil, getting tossed in the lake of fire. Let's read this. Revelations 20. Revelations 20. And let's take a look at verses 7 through 10. Revelations 20, verses 7 through 10. It says, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Because uh, this angel, he locked Satan up for a thousand years. And it's going to be nothing but peace on the earth. And this thousand year period is the Lord's Sabbath day, a day of rest. When the Lord going to be getting everything in order to get a kingdom over to the Father. This is why you see the Father's kingdom coming down after Jesus then got rid of all of the Father's enemies. This is why it's important for us to be obedient to the voice of the Lord because we don't want to be one of the enemies that get eliminated. Okay, so once again, Revelations 20 verse 7. It says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So Satan is going to influence these people to go up to Jerusalem when Jesus is there and fire going to come down out of heaven and burn up every last one of them. And after that, Satan the devil getting tossed in the fire. This that bruising of his head. Watch this. It says, and they went up on the breath of the earth. And compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So Satan got these people sent off, got them burnt up. He deceived them. He got out of prison coming out line. That's all this dude do. He didn't learn no lesson. He wicked. You can't make straight what God made crooked. He a wicked devil. Let's see what happened to him. Let's look at this bruise to his head that he going to get. This is this going to be a glorious time right here, family. It says, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Oh, that beast and that false prophet, the one that was persecuting the saints. They got tossed in the lake of fire before Satan did. But this is where Satan will be at. This is his last stop, the lake of fire. And boy, that's going to be a great, a, a great day when this guy is eliminated out of God's creation. All right. So with that being said, that was one of the first prophecies of the Bible, the destruction of Satan. I hope you got some understanding in the almighty name of Jesus. Now, let's continue on with the mission statement of the channel, which is to turn the hearts of the people back to God. So let's go and look at this over here in uh, Psalms 38. Psalms 38 and verse 18. And uh, one thing that we need to be aware of is that, you know, <sighs> Satan is, he, he'll, he'll come and tempt you with some things. But at the end of the day, don't fall for that trap. Because after you do whatever you do, don't you feel guilty? You feel like you like you dirty. You know, like, oh, man, why did I do that? But this is what we need to do right here. Every last one of us, because every last one of us has fallen short of the glory of God. But the God that we serve, he is a very, very merciful God, a forgiving God. All we got to do is confess our sins, repent and show God that you, you didn't change. You don't want to go that way no more. Look at this. Psalms 38, verse 18. He says, for I will declare mine iniquity. I will be sorry for my sins. So we got to take accountability. When you didn't messed up, confess to God that you messed up. All right. So now we're going to let it rest right here. We're going to read these things that we normally close out with. And we want these words to rest on us and our households for a thousand generations. For as long as we are obeying the voice of the Lord. It says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, on this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. 
The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. We want them words to apply to us, family. In Jesus' name. Let's go and take a look at one more thing. We're going to let it rest right here. It's what we're going to be concluding these Bible studies with. It's why we come together every day reading about what thus saith the Lord. Look at this. I see the benefits of thinking about God all the time. It says, then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And the book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. And that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make up my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. So with that being said, family. May the spirit of God rest upon each and every one of us. I pray that you all continue to enjoy this Sabbath day. I love you all so much, and Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow with another topic out of the Holy Scriptures. Until then, peace in the almighty name of Jesus, family.